Welcome, dear listeners. Today, we journey through the thrilling chronicles of none other than Lewis Hamilton, a figure who has skillfully, intricately weaved his narrative into the grand tapestry of Formula One history. From his humble beginnings in Stevenage, Hertfordshire, born to Anthony Hamilton and Carmen Lardestier, the young, ambitious Lewis quickly made a name for himself in the world of racing. Now let's talk numbers, shall we? Seven World Drivers Championship titles, an honor he shares with the legendary Michael Schumacher. On to your hats, folks, because our dear Lewis holds the record for the highest number of wins, pole positions, and podium finishes. And oh, the drama. In his rookie year, 2007, Lewis lost out to Kimi Raikkonen by a mere point, but bounced back to claim his maiden championship the following year, becoming the then youngest world champion, shattering records left and right. Isn't that just the stuff of legends? Then comes 2013, and a pivotal decision. Signing with Mercedes, Lewis was about to embark on a journey of unprecedented dominance. The introduction of turbo-hybrid engines in 2014 marked the beginning of a golden era for our hero. Through intense competition with his teammate Nico Rosberg and Ferrari's stalwart Sebastian Vettel and winning consecutive titles, Lewis Hamilton proved time and time again why he's a force to be reckoned with. And if you think this man is all about racing, think again. A man of influence, a man of style, and a man with a heart for the environment and social issues? Knighted in 2021, Lewis Hamilton is more than just a race car driver. He's a cultural icon, a beacon of diversity in motorsport, and a global superstar. And let's not forget his ability to adapt to changing track conditions and push the limits of his car is simply astonishing. Lewis Hamilton's driving style is nothing short of aggressive and fearless. Yet, with such a towering persona comes scrutiny and criticism. Despite facing racism and media backlash, he stands tall, using his influence to champion important social and environmental causes. From music to fashion to philanthropy, this man does it all. In his personal life, Lewis is quite the globetrotter, with homes in Switzerland, Monaco, and the United States. A man of faith, Hamilton made the decision to adopt a vegan lifestyle, further demonstrating his commitment to environmental issues. Let's talk about money, shall we? His wealth is staggering, with estimates placing his net worth in the hundreds of millions. One of the highest paid athletes in the world, Hamilton has signed lucrative contracts with Mercedes, showing that success comes with its own rewards. In conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, Lewis Hamilton's life and career is without a doubt historic, timeless, and dare I say, simply epic. Well, hello there, all you Formula One fanatics. This is your host for the day, George Watson, usually found in the commentary box, but today, right here on your favorite F1 Motor Fever podcast channel. Joining me today is our regular, the eloquent and ever insightful Mr. William. Pleasure to be here, George. Looking forward to sharing some of my thoughts on the incredible Lewis Hamilton. That's right, folks. It's Thursday morning, meaning it's time for our special episodes where we delve into the epic, the historic, and the downright thrilling subjects in the world of Formula One. You're used to hearing Enzo's voice in the morning, but today, it's yours truly taking you on this high-speed journey. Now, if you're enjoying these special episodes on the F1 Motor Fever podcast channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, turn on those notifications, drop us a comment, and share it with your fellow speed enthusiasts. Your support keeps our engines running. And honestly, you wouldn't want to miss out on the unique perspectives and stories we bring you every week. Absolutely, William. Fancy more inside scoops and insights on the legendary Lewis Hamilton? Well then, stick with us. We chose today's subject because we believe it's one that's close to many a listener's heart. It's a tale of overcoming adversity, smashing records, and standing up for what's right. 
So buckle up because we're going full throttle on this one. Now to continue this thrilling ride, Sir Lewis Carl Davidson Hamilton, the man behind the helmet and the racing gloves, has indeed etched his name in the annals of Formula One history. Winning a joint record of seven World Drivers' Championship titles, he stands shoulder to shoulder with the iconic Michael Schumacher. That's interesting, but could you provide some examples of his remarkable achievements? Certainly, happy to oblige. Hamilton has set multiple records in the sport. He holds the record for the highest number of wins, standing at a staggering 103. Pole positions? He's got 104 of those. And podium finishes? A mind-boggling 195. That's a hefty stack of records. Absolutely, and it doesn't end there. In his debut season, he set numerous records and was only a point away from winning the championship, losing out to Kimi Raikkonen. However, he pulled a rabbit out of the hat the following season with a last lap overtake in the final race to clinch his first championship. At that time, he was the youngest ever Formula One world champion. That's quite a compelling journey. Indeed. He later moved to Mercedes in 2013, and the introduction of the turbo hybrid engines in 2014 marked the beginning of a golden era for Hamilton. He won six more driver's titles, making his total tally to seven, equaling Schumacher's record. So he's more than just a racer? Absolutely. He's a man of many talents and interests. Hamilton has been credited with attracting a broader audience to Formula One. His high-profile lifestyle, environmental and social activism, and ventures in music and fashion have endeared him to many outside the sport. He's also been a vocal advocate for combating racism and pushing for increased diversity in motorsport. His influence was recognized when he was listed as one of the 100 most influential people globally by time in 2020 and was knighted in the 2021 New Year Honors. Quite the decorated career, isn't it? Indeed, it's been one for the history books. And knowing Lewis Hamilton, he's far from done. Let's dive into the early life of Sir Lewis Hamilton. Born to a black father of Grenadian descent and a white British mother from Birmingham, Hamilton identifies as black. His parents separated when he was just two, and he lived with his mother and half-sisters until he was 12. It seems he had a fair share of challenges early on. Yes, indeed. He then moved in with his father and stepmother and half-brother Nicholas, who also took up professional racing. Their family unit was built on a Catholic upbringing. So how did he get into racing? Well, it all started when his father bought him a radio-controlled car at the age of five. He finished second in the National BRCA Championship the following year against adult competition. His father gifted him with a go-kart for Christmas when he was six and promised to support his racing career as long as he worked hard at school. That's quite a commitment from his father. Yes, his father even took redundancy from his IT manager position to support Hamilton's racing career. He worked multiple jobs, from selling double glazing to dishwashing, and still made time to attend his son's races. So, while he was dominating the track, what was he doing in his free time? Well, he also played football for his school team with Ashley Young. He's an Arsenal fan and said that if not for Formula One, he'd have likely pursued a career in football or cricket. It's definitely a loaded journey, isn't it? Makes you reflect on all the sweat, tears, and sheer grit that goes into making a Formula One champion. What do you think, dear listeners? Are you finding these insights as illuminating as I am? Don't forget to hit the like button if you're enjoying this deep dive into the life and times of Lewis Hamilton. Thanks for joining us on this exciting journey. Let's continue exploring. Continuing our journey, let's venture into Hamilton's early racing career. At just 10 years old, he became the youngest driver to win the British Cadet Karting Championship. Quite the accomplishment at such a young age. Indeed, that year, he approached McLaren Formula One team boss Ron Dennis at the Autosport Awards and stated his ambition to race for McLaren. Dennis humorously told him to phone in nine years and they'd sort something out. I guess Dennis couldn't have anticipated what was to come. 
quite right. When Hamilton was only 12, Ladbrokes took a bet that he'd win a Formula One race before turning 23, and even that he'd win the World Drivers' Championship before he was 25. Risky bet, but it seems like it paid off. Absolutely. In 1998, Dennis did call Hamilton after he won his second Super One Series and British Championship, offering him a role in the McLaren driver development program. This made Hamilton the youngest driver to secure a contract, resulting in a Formula One drive. That's quite a leap. Certainly. Hamilton continued his progress, became the European champion in 2000 with maximum points. His teammate back then in Formula A and Formula Super A was Nico Rosberg, who would later drive for the Williams and Mercedes teams in Formula One. They would also team up again for Mercedes from 2013 to 2016. It seems like their paths were intertwined from the beginning. Yes, indeed. In 2001, Michael Schumacher made a one-off return to karts and competed against Hamilton and other future Formula One drivers. Schumacher was full of praise for the young Briton, predicting his success in Formula One. And then, of course, he moved on to car racing. Exactly. He started his car racing career in the 2001 British Formula Renault Winter Series, finishing fifth in the standings. Hamilton's journey to become a Formula One legend was in full swing. Hamilton's journey was far from smooth, even after securing his contract. His next stint was the 2002 Formula Renault UK campaign with Manor Motorsport, where he finished fifth. He stayed on with Manor for another year and won the championship, outperforming Alex Lloyd. Impressive! After winning the championship, Hamilton made his debut in the British Formula 3 championship. However, in his first race, he had to withdraw due to a puncture, and in the second, he crashed out, resulting in hospitalization. That must have been a hard pill to swallow. It was, but when asked about the prospect of becoming one of the youngest Formula One drivers, he stated his goal wasn't to be the youngest, but to be experienced and then show what he could do in Formula One. That's a wise perspective. Hamilton then made his debut with Manor in the 2004 Formula 3 Euro Series, ending the year fifth in the championship. <laughs> he also won the Bahrain F30 Super Prix and, uh, and took part in the Macu's F30 Grand Prix twice. <laughs> so he was collecting experience and accolades along the way. Absolutely. After a bit of a tussle with McLaren, Hamilton re-signed with them. He first tested for McLaren at Silverstone in late 2004 and moved to the reigning Euro Series Champions ASM for the 2005 season, where he dominated the championship, winning 15 out of the 20 rounds. That's a remarkable win rate. In 2006, Hamilton moved to ASM's sister GP2 team, ART Grand Prix. Right out of the gate, he won the GP2 championship, beating Nelson Piquet Jr. Hamilton's rise through the ranks was nothing short of meteoric, proof of his exceptional talent. Hamilton's GP2 success coincided with a vacancy at McLaren following the departure of Juan Pablo Montoya to NASCAR and Kimi Raikkonen to Ferrari. After months of speculation, Hamilton was confirmed as the team's second driver to partner with defending champion Fernando Alonso for 2007. What was the public reaction to that announcement? The announcement was delayed by almost two months to avoid being overshadowed by Michael Schumacher's retirement announcement. But once the news was out, it was well received. And how did Hamilton's first season in Formula One go? Hamilton's first season in Formula One was quite remarkable. He was partnered with two-time and defending world champion Fernando Alonso. Hamilton is the first and, as of 2023, the only black driver to race in the series. After finishing on the podium in his debut, he went on to set several records as he finished runner-up in the 2007 World Drivers' Championship to Kimi Räikkönen by just one point. What kind of records did he set? He set records for the most consecutive podium finishes from debut, with nine in a row, the joint most wins in a debut season with four, and the most points in a debut season with 109. Throughout the season, Hamilton and Alonso were involved in a number of incidents which resulted in tensions between both drivers and the team. 
That must have been quite challenging. How did it affect his relationship with McLaren? Well, the tensions culminated in Alonzo and McLaren terminating their contract by mutual consent in November. But Hamilton had a successful first season at McLaren and signed a multi-million pound contract to stay with the team until 2012. Hamilton's success story continued in 2008. He won five races and had 10 podium finishes. As the season came to a close in Brazil, it was a two-way fight for the title between home favorite Felipe Massa and our young Breton. That must have been quite a nail-biter. Absolutely. Hamilton won his first title in a dramatic fashion in the last race of the season at the 2008 Brazilian Grand Prix. He overtook Timo Glock for fifth position in the final corners of the last lap to become the then youngest Formula One world champion in history. He must have been over the moon. Yes, indeed. This victory made him the first British driver to win the world championship since Damon Hill in 1996. However, he did face challenges in the following years. What kind of challenges? His car in 2009 was far from perfect. Hamilton has been quoted saying it was the worst car he's had, but he continued to score podium finishes and race victories. In the 2010 season, he entered the final round with a chance of winning the title, but ultimately finished fourth as Sebastian Vettel took his maiden driver's crown. That was Vettel's breakthrough moment. Yes, it was. In 2011, distractions in his private life and run-ins with FIA officials saw him finish a lowly fifth in the standings, but Hamilton bounced back in 2012 with four race wins. Quite a roller coaster of a journey, I must say. Indeed. And then, before the end of 2012, Hamilton announced his move to Mercedes for the 2013 season, replacing the retiring Michael Schumacher. That was quite a surprise. Yes, I remember that. It was indeed a surprise. He was even reunited with his childhood karting teammate, Nico Rosberg. What a journey. Just to add a bit of context to our discussion, I came across this information on the 13th of September, 2023, on a site called Pastebin. The author, however, was not named. Pastebin, I've heard of it. It's a website where users can store plain text. It's a good source, but it's always advisable to cross-reference information from multiple reliable sources. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Now, let's get back to Hamilton's journey. Hamilton's first season with the Silver Arrows saw him secure a sole race victory at the Hungarian Grand Prix. He turned an unexpected pole position into a winning margin of over 11 seconds ahead of Kimi Raikkonen. Despite several podium finishes and pole positions, Hamilton finished fourth in the standings, the third time in five years. I remember that race. He did a phenomenal job. Absolutely. Now, changes to regulations for the 2014 season, which mandated the use of turbo hybrid engines, contributed to an incredibly successful era for Hamilton. This year saw Mercedes win 16 out of the 19 races with 11 victories secured by Hamilton. He prevailed in a season-long duel for the title against teammate Rosberg. So that was when he clinched his second driver's title. Yes, you're right. He declared over the team radio after the final race in Abu Dhabi, this is the greatest day of my life. Must have been quite the high for him. Absolutely. That year... New driver number regulations allowed drivers to pick a unique car number to use for their entire career. Hamilton elected to continue driving under his old karting number 44. That's a number that's become synonymous with him now. Yes, indeed. And he continued with number 44 even after winning the world championship. This was the first season since 1994 that the field did not contain a car bearing the number one. That's quite noteworthy. It sure is. Hamilton dominated the 2015 season, matching his hero Ayrton Senna's three world championships titles. His rivalry with Rosberg intensified, climaxing in a heated battle at the U.S. Grand Prix. That was a race to remember. Indeed. He won that race and clinched the title with three races to spare. That year, Hamilton also extended his contract with Mercedes for three more years in a deal reportedly worth more than 100 million pounds. This made him one of the best-paid drivers 
in Formula One. In 2016, Hamilton's engine failure in Malaysia was a key moment in the Drivers' Championship fight. Despite winning more races and securing more pole positions than any other driver, he lost the driver's title to his teammate, Rosberg, by just five points. This was after a season full of acrimonious exchanges both on and off the track, with Hamilton even defying team orders at the season finale in Abu Dhabi. Indeed, that was a real turning point. The way Hamilton slowed down to back Rosberg into the chasing pack in order to encourage others to overtake him was highly controversial. Yes, it was a risky strategy, but it didn't pay off. Rosberg ultimately took the title and then shocked the world by retiring immediately after beating Hamilton. That was a move that certainly upset the status quo. But it's interesting to see how Hamilton dealt with it. In 2017, he was facing off against Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel, and Hamilton registered 11 pole positions that season. He even took the record for the all-time most pole positions. Yes, he was certainly on a roll. But there's one thing I've been wondering about. How much of Hamilton's success do you think is down to the car he's driving? That's a good question. Of course, the car plays a significant role. The Mercedes team has consistently produced the fastest cars over the last few years, and that's certainly been a big factor in Hamilton's success. You think so? I mean, he's a very talented driver. Absolutely. He's extremely skilled. But it's worth considering that many other drivers, if they had the same car, might have been able to achieve similar results. It's always a combination of driver skill and vehicle performance. Hmm. That's a perspective I hadn't fully considered. It's always good to keep an open mind and consider various angles. Yes, you're right. I'll have to mull it over a bit. During the season, Hamilton signed another two-year contract with Mercedes, reportedly worth up to 40 million pounds a year, making him the best-paid Formula One driver in history. That's quite the payday, I must say. Absolutely. He then defended his title in 2019, leading the driver's standings for most of the season. Despite challenges from Bottas, Verstappen, and Leclerc, he clinched his sixth driver's crown at the United States Grand Prix with two races remaining. I remember that. His sixth career Grand Slam in the final race of the season was pretty impressive. Indeed. He finished the season with 11 wins, 17 podiums, and five pole positions. He amassed a total of 413 points for the season, another all-time record, and finished 87 points clear of second-placed Bottas. Quite a dominating performance. In 2020, Hamilton won his seventh driver's title, equaling the record set by Schumacher. This was in a season heavily affected by the global pandemic. Yes, I recall. Despite the shortened 17 race season, he managed to secure 11 wins, including one in Portugal to break Schumacher's record of 91 wins. That's correct. He also took 14 podiums and 10 pole positions. However, he missed the Sakia Grand Prix after contracting COVID-19, his first race absence since his debut in 2007. Quite a year it was for him. Indeed. And amid Formula One's We Race As One campaign and the growing global support for the Black Lives Matter movement, Hamilton took the knee ahead of every race he entered and wore T-shirts bearing the Black Lives Matter slogan. It's great to see him using his platform for such important causes. Absolutely. Hamilton and Bottas's cars also sported a black livery as a statement of Mercedes' commitment to diversity. A fitting tribute, indeed. The 2021 season saw Hamilton and Verstappen engaging in several on-track battles. It has been quite the season, hasn't it? Indeed it has, and it's only made the sport that much more exciting to watch. The 2021 season was something else, wasn't it? Early on, it became clear that Hamilton and Red Bull's Max Verstappen were the title favorites. Absolutely. They frequently exchanged the championship lead throughout the season, often sparring on track. And the finale in Abu Dhabi was truly dramatic. Verstappen managed to overtake Hamilton on the final lap of the race, denying Hamilton his eighth title. That race was certainly controversial. Verstappen, on newly fitted soft tires, managed to enter the final lap just behind Hamilton on worn hard tires due to a decision by the race director. 
Indeed, race director Michael Macy's decision was met with a lot of controversy, leading to an internal investigation by the FIA. Despite all the controversy, I think we can agree that the 2021 season was one of the most intense, hard-fought battles in sporting history, as BBC Sports' Andrew Benson put it. Absolutely. And now, in the 2022 season, we've seen Hamilton partnered with George Russell replacing the departing Bottas. Mercedes introduced a radical zero side pod car design, which was significantly different from its competitors. Yes, but it didn't all go smoothly. During the first half of the season, Hamilton had to experiment with car setups, trying to get the most out of the W13. It's been quite the season so far. Despite the struggles, Hamilton has remained committed and continues to push himself and the team. Hamilton's contributions to car development really showed in his performance during the second half of the season, didn't they? Indeed. Despite a rocky first half, he managed to score more podium finishes and championship points than Russell during the second half. He also set quite a few records during the season, like most consecutive seasons, with at least one podium finish, and most consecutive seasons with at least one lap led. And let's not forget most races with a single constructor, most Q3 appearances, and most top 10 finishes. Indeed. However, despite these impressive stats, Hamilton failed to achieve a race win or pole position in a season for the first time in his Formula One career. Yes, quite a change for him. He ended up sixth in the Drivers' Championship, 35 points behind Russell. The 2023 season opened with concerns about Mercedes's competitiveness. Hamilton himself said they were not where they wanted to be after preseason testing. Despite these concerns, Hamilton managed to finish fifth in the opening race in Bahrain and achieved his first podium of the season in Australia. Excellent recovery, I must say. And let's not forget his fantastic performance at the home race at Silverstone, where he fought from seventh on the grid to take third place. True, a spectacular race. He also managed to qualify just three thousandths of a second ahead of Verstappen at the Hungarian Grand Prix, taking his 104th pole position and his first since 2021. Quite an achievement. And to top it all, he signed a two-year contract to remain with Mercedes through the 2025 season. I must say he's a driver who really knows how to keep us on our toes. Indeed, and with Russell also signing a two-year extension, Mercedes' driver pair is set to remain quite strong. Hamilton has been lauded for his driving skills, particularly his ability to adapt to variances in the car setup and changing track conditions. I've heard that he is comfortable with levels of rear instability that most other drivers would find intolerable. Is that correct? Absolutely. And not only that, throughout his career, he's typically used less fuel than his teammates due to his ability to carry momentum through corners, despite any car instability. Fascinating. It's also impressive how consistent he's been, especially during his time at Mercedes. Indeed, from year 2017 to 2018, he finished 33 consecutive races in point-scoring positions. You know what else I heard? Allegedly, Hamilton has a secret pedal in his car that allows him to magically get more speed when needed. Whoa, slow down there. That sounds like a wild hypothesis. We need to be careful about spreading such information without confirmation. It's important to verify from credible sources like the official Formula One website or the Banderantes television channel. You're right. I apologize for that. I will be more cautious next time. Not a problem. Let's just remember the importance of accuracy in our discussions. Hamilton's drive at the 2020 Turkish Grand Prix was one for the books, wasn't it? Oh, yes. Despite qualifying only sixth, he managed to gamble on a one-stop strategy in mixed conditions while his rivals chose to change their tires for a second time. That's right. And he didn't just win, he took the lead and finished over 30 seconds ahead. A remarkable achievement. His performance was certainly in stark contrast to his teammate Bottas, who spun four times and ended up a lap down in 14th place. It's such feats that have made him the most successful British driver in Formula One history. And have you noticed the influence of Ayrton Senna on him? Indeed, he's even said that Senna was a major influence on his driving style. He's also been compared to Senna in terms of raw speed. It seems he certainly lived up to that admiration. He drove Senna's original title-winning McLaren as part of a tribute documentary and named Senna as the number one driver ever. Early on in his career, Hamilton had been criticized for being hot-headed at times. 
Yes, I remember, but since moving to Mercedes, he's demonstrated greater maturity while maintaining his aggressive edge. Agreed. And he certainly made his mark on the sport. Bernie Ecclestone once said Hamilton is absolutely outstanding, as good as there's ever been. Apart from the talent, he's a good guy. He gets out on the street and supports and promotes Formula One. He is box office 100%. Certainly high praise, and justifiably so. Hamilton is often described as the best driver of his generation and one of the greatest Formula One drivers. Hamilton is undeniably a standout figure in Formula One. No doubt about that. In fact, he's often described as one of the greatest Formula One drivers of all time. Many even suggest that he ranks among the greatest British sportsmen. However, despite his accomplishments, he's been a divisive figure in the eyes of the public. True. Some journalists argue that his achievements on the track have been underappreciated. There have even been suggestions that racial bias may have affected his popularity relative to his achievements. That's an unfortunate reality. But there's also the aspect of perceived predictability in results during the turbo-hybrid era, similar to Schumacher's period of dominance in the early 2000s. But many sports people, like tennis players Steffi Graf and Martina Navratilova, became more appreciated later in their careers. Besides his driving skills, what strikes me about Hamilton is his maturity and how he acknowledges the influence he has as a role model. Right. He's not just a driver in Formula One. He has broader interests and opinions about the environment, young people, fashion, and music. It seems that his appeal extends beyond the track. Indeed, his jet-set lifestyle and interests outside Formula One have been closely scrutinized, but he's been praised for disregarding convention and public opinion. And it's not just about grand gestures. Between race weekends, Hamilton travels around the world to explore various interests. I remember in 2018, after winning the Italian Grand Prix, he flew to Shanghai and New York to release his own designer clothing line with Tommy Hilfiger before flying back to win the next race in Singapore. It's that kind of freedom that lets Hamilton function at his best. Figures in the sport like Emerson Fittipaldi and Christian Horner have praised his ability to connect with fans. Even Bernie Ecclestone frequently commented on his admiration of Hamilton's ability to promote the sport. Since Hamilton's rookie season in 2007, Formula One's annual global revenue rose by 53%. That's quite an impact, isn't it? Indeed. And sports journalist Luke Slater goes as far as to argue that there have been few better representatives of the sport than Hamilton, both on and off the track. And let's not overlook how versatile he's been. As Fernando Alonso once said, Hamilton could win with a dominant car, a good car, or even with bad cars. Not all champions can make such a claim. Absolutely. From being a prodigious talent as a teenager... Hamilton established himself as one of the world's best drivers following his record-breaking rookie year. And even when he didn't finish higher than fourth in the Drivers' Championship from 2009 to 2013, many still considered him the best driver of his generation. And it's worth noting that during those less successful years with McLaren, Hamilton still won at least one race in 15 consecutive seasons. His ability to extract race-winning performances from non-dominant cars has been highly praised. That's the hallmark of a great driver. After he clinched his second and third world championship titles with Mercedes, David Coulthard declared Hamilton the best driver of his generation, even calling him the Ayrton Senna of his era. And it's not just Coulthard. That opinion is widely accepted among the public, experts, and fellow and former drivers. As Hamilton became more widely considered the best driver of his era, the debate moved from his status in modern Formula One to his status among the greatest drivers in history. The next few seasons saw Hamilton break a number of records, including achieving the most all-time pole positions, surpassing Michael Schumacher. This led some to regard him as the greatest qualifier in history, to be honest, I didn't really follow. Could you explain it differently? Of course. Simply put, Hamilton achieved the most first-place starts, or pole positions, in history, even more than the legendary Michael Schumacher. This feat, among others, has led many to consider him the greatest qualifier in the history of Formula One. 
I see, thanks for clarifying. So after winning his fourth and fifth world titles, his place among the greats of the sport became more solidified, correct? Absolutely. In fact, after Hamilton clinched his sixth World Drivers' Championship title in 2019, ex-Formula One driver and pundit Johnny Herbert acclaimed Hamilton as the greatest driver ever. His Mercedes team boss Toto Wolff even described him as maybe the best driver that has ever existed. That's high praise. And after Hamilton won his seventh title in 2020, comparisons to other great sportsmen like tennis player Roger Federer and golfer Tiger Woods started to emerge, right? Indeed. It's not just about the number of championships, but the fearlessness and determination that Hamilton displayed in his career that truly sets him apart. It's no surprise that he's often compared to other greats in the world of sports. And what about his helmet designs? I've heard he's quite particular about them. That's correct. Hamilton's helmet designs have evolved over the years, going from predominantly yellow during his karting years to white during his Formula One career. He even selected his helmet design from fan submissions in 2017. The winning design used a white and yellow base color with red and orange details and the addition of three stars, one for each of Hamilton's three Formula One championships at that time. As he won further world championship titles, he added more stars to his helmet. It's a nice touch and a reminder of his achievements every time he puts on that helmet. Hamilton has not just been innovative on the track, but also with his helmet designs. For instance, in the 2010 Monaco Grand Prix, he sported a helmet design featuring a roulette wheel image on the top. That reminds me of my childhood. I remember I used to doodle on my school notebooks, dreaming of becoming a race car driver. I'd spend hours designing my own helmet. It's intriguing how drivers use their helmets to express their personality or pay tribute. That's quite a sweet memory. And speaking of tributes, Hamilton has also used his helmet designs to honor influential figures in his career. At the 2011 Brazilian Grand Prix, he wore a special helmet in tribute to Ayrton Senna. The helmet was later auctioned in aid of the Ayrton Senna Foundation. Yes, and in 2019, Hamilton, like Sebastian Vettel, wore a special helmet to pay tribute to Nicky Lauda. The helmet had Lauda's classic colors, red and white, and his name printed on the back. Hamilton's helmet designs have also reflected his personal causes. In 2020, he switched to a black helmet with purple details in support of Black Lives Matter. He continued with this design in 2021. There was also the time he wore a rainbow helmet at the 2021 Qatar Grand Prix, Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, and Abu Dhabi Grand Prix in support of the LGBTQ community. Ahead of the 2022 season, Hamilton has reverted to using a yellow helmet design for the first time since 2013, and it still incorporates the purple details, evidently a favorite color. The evolution of his helmet designs certainly adds an extra layer of intrigue to his racing career. Indeed, it's a unique canvas for drivers to express themselves, tell their story, or make a statement. Rather like the doodles on my school notebooks, eh? Hamilton continued his trend of one-off designs for the 2022 Monaco Grand Prix, Japanese Grand Prix, and Sao Paulo Grand Prix, and it seems he's retained the yellow helmet design into 2023. It's like a new chapter with each season, isn't it? Indeed. Now... Let's shift gears a bit and talk about rivalries. In Hamilton's debut season, he was partnered with two-time and defending world champion Fernando Alonso. This pairing stirred up quite a bit of tension. Oh, I remember that. That was quite a controversial season, wasn't it? It certainly was. The first signs of tension surfaced after Hamilton finished second behind Alonso at Monaco in 2007. After the race, Hamilton made comments suggesting he had been forced into a supporting role for Alonso. And didn't that lead to some sort of investigation by the FIA? Yes, it did. The FIA investigated whether McLaren had broken rules by enforcing team orders. However, McLaren denied favoring Alonso, and the FIA eventually found the team not guilty. But that wasn't the end of it, was it? Far from it. The tension escalated at the 2007 Hungarian Grand Prix. 
Here, Hamilton went out on track ahead of Alonso, ignoring requests from the team to let him through. This led to Hamilton getting delayed in the pits by Alonso and thus unable to set a final lap time before the end of the session. Ah, right. And that resulted in Alonso getting relegated to sixth place on the starting grid and McLaren being docked Constructors' Championship points. Exactly. And all this led to a significant fallout between Hamilton and Alonso, with reports suggesting the pair was not on speaking terms for a period. Quite a dramatic chapter in Hamilton's career, wouldn't you say? Following this intense rivalry and the end of their season as teammates, Hamilton and Alonso were reportedly tied on 109 points, but Hamilton placed second, and Alonso third in the World Drivers' Championship due to Hamilton having more second-place finishes. That's a testament to their competitive spirit and talent. It's fascinating how such fierce competition can exist within the same team. Absolutely. And the speculation that either Hamilton or Alonso would leave McLaren at the end of the season finally materialized. Alonso and McLaren terminated their contract by mutual consent in November that year. That ended a chapter of one of the most epic rivalries in Formula One history. But interestingly, in subsequent years, the tensions between the pair dissipated and mutual respect grew. Alonso even praised Hamilton in 2017, highlighting his ability to win with both good and bad cars. Hamilton's ability to adapt and excel no matter the circumstances is indeed commendable. As we move on to 2013, Hamilton was paired alongside Nico Rosberg, his old karting teammate and friend, when he joined Mercedes. This pairing, during a period of Mercedes dominance in Formula One, also led to its own share of strain and volatile confrontations. Rosberg and Hamilton were first teammates in 2000, when they were in karting. Even then, they were fiercely competitive both on and off the track. Their rivalry added another layer of intrigue to the sport, didn't it? Oh, definitely. It's always the rivalries that add that extra dose of adrenaline to the sport. It's what keeps us, and no doubt the drivers too, on our toes. Now here's a fun bit of trivia for our listeners. Did you know that Hamilton and Rosberg's rivalry dates back to their childhood karting days? They actually first became teammates in the year 2000 when they were just kids, tearing up the karting circuits. It seems they were destined to be rivals from the start, doesn't it? Indeed. And even off the track, their competitive spirit was evident. A fellow racer, Robert Kubica, who raced with them before Formula One, once mentioned that they would even have races to eat pizza, always eating two at a time. Now that's a rivalry. Shows just how deep their competitive spirit runs. Exactly. From track to table, these two were always looking to outdo each other. It just goes to show that in the world of racing, the competition isn't limited to the circuit alone. Speaking about their contrasting backgrounds, Rosberg, an only child, was born in Germany, but brought up in Monaco. Being the son of a wealthy former Formula One world champion, Keki Rosberg, he had quite a privileged upbringing. On the other hand, Hamilton was born on a council estate in Stevenage, and his father had to work multiple jobs to fund his son's junior racing. It's interesting to see how their respective backgrounds shaped them as racers. Absolutely. Their old karting boss, Dino Chiesa, once mentioned that Hamilton was the faster driver, whereas Rosberg, who once said to Chiesa, everything relates to physics and maths, was always more analytical. That analytical mindset of Rosberg must have served him well in Formula One, given the intellectual capacity required to manage aspects like brakes, energy harvesting, tire management, and fuel usage. Indeed, but Hamilton's tire management often allowed him to push on for longer, enabling optimum race strategies, and his fuel usage has regularly been better than almost anyone on the grid. It seems Hamilton's adaptation and endurance were key to his success on the track. In their time together as teammates, Hamilton and Rosberg won 54 of 78 races over four seasons. Hamilton had 32 victories, 55 podium finishes and qualified ahead of Rosberg 42 times. Rosberg wasn't far behind, though, with 22 victories, 50 podium finishes and qualifying ahead of Hamilton 36 times. During this period, 
Hamilton won two world championship titles to Rosberg's one and scored more points in three out of their four seasons together. It's fair to say that they both made a significant mark in the world of Formula One. Moving on from the rivalry with Rosberg, Hamilton has described his rivalry with Sebastian Vettel as his favorite, believing their battles on track helped bring them closer together. After three years of Mercedes dominance from 2014 to 2016, Ferrari produced a car that was capable of fighting for the championship in 2017 and 2018. That's right, Vettel, who was then driving for Ferrari, enjoyed an early lead on points, but Mercedes and Hamilton fought back and ultimately won the championships in both seasons. Their competition wasn't always smooth sailing, though. Most notably, during the 2017 Azerbaijan Grand Prix, Vettel accused Hamilton of brake checking and drove into Hamilton in retaliation, earning himself a penalty. But despite such flashpoints, the pair developed a strong mutual respect in a hard but fairly contested fight. That reminds me of what my uncle used to say. He'd say, racing is not just about being the fastest, it's also about respect and fair play. And it seems Hamilton and Fettel embodied that in their rivalry. Hamilton once recalled, mine and Seb's battle were my favorite so far. It's knowing I was racing against an incredible driver. Not only that, but a great man in Seb, who is a four-time world champion, and we were racing against another team. He was at Ferrari, who were very strong at the time. It took a lot out of both of us in that period of time to remain focused, to deliver weekend in, weekend out. That was a difficult period for us, and it brought us closer because the respect we have between us is huge. It's fascinating to see the deep respect between these great competitors. Now, there's a darker side to Hamilton's career, and that's the racist treatment he's had to endure throughout. In 2010, Hamilton was racially abused by fans during preseason testing at Jerez. He's been the first and, as of 2023, the only black driver to race in Formula One, and this has sadly made him a target of racial abuse throughout his career. That's a terrible thing to hear. Could you give some examples? Sure. One instance was in 2018. Hamilton had to deal with online racist abuse following a controversial win at the British Grand Prix. Mercedes Formula One and the FIA issued a joint statement condemning the abuse. And how has Hamilton responded to all this? Hamilton has shown immense strength and resilience. He initially tried to ignore the fact that he was the first black guy ever to race in the sport but later stated that he had grown to appreciate the implications. In fact, he's changed his approach to promote equality within the sport. It's commendable how he's used his platform to advocate for change. Absolutely. Hamilton is a prominent advocate against racism and for increased diversity in motorsport. He once commented on his influence on minority representation in Formula One, saying... People come up to me from different ethnic backgrounds saying, my kid wants to be you one day. And I can assure you that when I started racing, there weren't people from those ethnic backgrounds. I take great pride in that. It's incredible to see how his influence extends far beyond the racetrack. Hamilton's activism transcends the racetrack. He took the knee before every race he entered in the 2020 Formula One season in support of the Black Lives Matter movement and wore T-shirts bearing the Black Lives Matter slogan. Following the murder of George Floyd in May 2020, which sparked national and global protests, Hamilton criticized prominent figures in Formula One for their silence on the issue. What did he say? He wrote on Instagram, I see those of you who are staying silent. Some of you the biggest of stars, yet you stay silent in the midst of injustice. Not a sign from anybody in my industry, which of course is a white-dominated sport. I'm one of the only people of color there, yet I stand alone. He called out for change, not just in America, but globally, and stressed that racism and hate are not innate, but taught. An important perspective indeed. Following Hamilton's comments, several drivers released statements about Floyd's murder and voiced their support for the Black Lives Matter movement and support was expressed from other figures in the sport as well. Ross Braun, managing director for Formula One, said that the organization supports Hamilton totally. 
describing him as a great ambassador for the sport. Braun stated that Formula One was working to increase diversity within the sport, with efforts targeted at the grassroots level as well as across all roles in the sport. So there's hope for change? Absolutely. Hamilton's actions have brought about a wave of awareness within the sport. While the road to equality and inclusion is a long one, it's clear that Hamilton's influence is paving the way for progress. Change is afoot, and though it may seem slow, every step taken is a step closer to a more inclusive and diverse Formula One. Well said. And here's hoping for a more inclusive future in the world of Formula One. Hamilton's advocacy doesn't stop at wearing a t-shirt. He's taken definitive action towards promoting diversity in motorsport. In June 2020, it was announced that Hamilton had established the Hamilton Commission with the Royal Academy of Engineering. The aim? To engage more young people from black backgrounds with science, technology, engineering, and mathematics subjects, and ultimately employ them in motorsport or in other engineering sectors. That's fantastic, making a tangible difference. Indeed. And in May 2021, Hamilton became the first recipient of the inaugural Laureus Athlete Advocate of the Year Award for his involvement in the fight against racism. But he didn't stop there. Building on the recommendations of the Hamilton Commission, he launched Mission 44, a charitable foundation created to help young people from underrepresented backgrounds achieve their ambitions in wider society. He even pledged 20 million pounds of his personal wealth to support the work of the charity. That's quite a commitment. It certainly is. Hamilton's activism extends to human rights as well. In December 2020, he confronted Bahrain's human rights abuses and spoke out on the allegations of sports washing. He asserted that ignoring the human rights issues in the countries where races are held is not the right way. Hamilton is not just a champion on the track, but a champion for change, too. A true advocate for justice, equality, and representation. A commendable endeavor. Hamilton's advocacy is not just limited to racial equality and human rights. He's also been outspoken about environmental issues and animal rights. He's used his social media platforms to gather support for his initiatives, which include urging China to reclassify dogs as pets instead of livestock, backing charities fighting the illegal wildlife trade, and calling for the protection of the Amazon rainforest. Sounds like he's using his influence effectively. Absolutely. In January 2020, he donated approximately 383,000 pounds to a variety of causes relating to the bushfire crisis in Australia. The money went towards the fire services and animal welfare charities. A very generous act. Not just that, in 2019, Hamilton asked Mercedes-Benz to swap animal-derived leather in the company's models worldwide. He's actively pushing for sustainability within his team and within the larger organization. The following year, he announced his aim of being carbon neutral, emphasizing the reduction of plastic use and making personal changes like selling his plane to fly less. That's quite a commitment to environmental consciousness. Indeed. And Hamilton's benevolence doesn't stop here. He has been actively working with the United Nations Children's Fund or UNICEF since 2012, He's traveled to the Philippines to make a short film about Manila's street children, helped raise over 4.9 million pounds for the UNICEF, and visited a UNICEF-funded newborn care unit and nutrition center in India. Hamilton, it seems, is not just a champion on the track, but a champion for change, too. That's truly inspiring. It goes to show that one can use their platform for the greater good. Hamilton's advocacy work with UNICEF continued over the years. In 2014, he traveled to Haiti to make a short film about child malnutrition. This film was shown during soccer aid and helped raise over six million pounds for UNICEF. A true testament of using his fame for a good cause. Agreed. In 2017, he joined the Super Dads Initiative, a special UNICEF campaign that highlighted the critical role played by fathers in early childhood development. He also visited Havana with UNICEF to learn more about its first development programs in Cuba. 
quite the devoted advocate. Absolutely. In 2020, Hamilton partnered with charity campaign Suit Together Band to help promote the United Nations' 17 Global Goals. As part of his campaign work, Hamilton visited a school in northwest London to speak to the students about the importance of education. He is a goal for ambassador, focusing on the fight to provide quality education to all children. Education is indeed a key to unlock potential. Hamilton's philanthropy extends beyond global organizations. Over the past decade, he has made time for a variety of good causes, such as making hospital visits to sick children. He's invited fans, young people, and their families to join him at Grand Prix races and social events. He became the global education ambassador for Save the Children, the first ambassador for the Invictus Games Foundation, and even donated free meals to frontline NHS workers during the COVID-19 pandemic through his Neatburger restaurant. A man of many facets indeed. And lastly, Hamilton often donates personal and professional paraphernalia for charity auctions. He auctioned a racing cart and raised over 42,000 pounds for baby charity Tommy's. What a commendable journey of giving back to society. Hamilton's generosity is simply exemplary. He's not only raised funds for the Small Steps Project, but he's also supported charities such as the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Comic Relief, Rays of Sunshine, Children in Need, and Stevenage's Keech Hospice Care Children's Service, among others. Admirable indeed. You know, I once attended a charity event where the fundraising was equally impressive. It's wonderful to see the impact such efforts can have. Oh, absolutely. Hamilton even created his own foundation, the Lewis Hamilton Foundation, which provides grants and donations to a number of charitable causes. But of course, like most public figures, he's also had his share of controversy. Like back in December 2018, during the BBC Sports Personality of the Year Awards. I recall that. He referred to his hometown Stevenage as the slums, didn't he? Yes, but he immediately corrected himself and later apologized for his choice of words. The town mayor accepted his apology. That reminds me of a time I unintentionally misspoke during a commentary session. It's not easy to find the right words under the spotlight. That's true. In the end, it's about owning up to mistakes and learning from them. And speaking of recognition, Hamilton has been regularly recognized in the Power List, an annual list of the most influential black Britons. In 2021... He was named the most influential Black Briton for his sporting success and his advocacy in the Black Lives Matter movement. Well-deserved recognition, I must say. Hamilton's influence continues to grow. In 2020, he was listed as one of Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People Globally, and he was knighted in the 2021 New Year Honors for services to motorsports. A true knight of the racing world indeed! However, like anyone in the public eye, he's faced his share of controversy. Back in 28, Christian Aid singled out Hamilton's tax arrangements in a report. More recently, following the leak of the Paradise Papers in November 2017, it was reported that Hamilton avoided paying £3.3 million of value-added tax on his private jet. Tax matters can often be quite complex, particularly with international earnings. True. Hamilton responded by saying that he pays tax in the UK but doesn't earn all his money here. He races in 19 different countries, so he earns his money in 20 different places and pays tax in several different places, including the UK. Quite a globetrotter. Definitely. Apart from racing, Hamilton also has interests in music. He started playing guitar when he was 13. He's been writing and recording music for 10 years and even features on pop star Christina Aguilera's 2018 song, Pipe, under the pseudonym XNDA. A man of many talents, it seems. Indeed, Hamilton's also made a few guest appearances in the Cars franchise, voicing an anthropomorphic version of himself in Cars 2 and a voice command assistant in Cars 3. Now that's a fun fact. You know, all this talk of music has me thinking back to the 60s. The Beatles, 
Rolling Stones. Those were the days. So much magic in the air. The songs, the lyrics. They just don't make them like that anymore, do they? I believe we've sort of veered off track here, haven't we? Ah, right you are. Sorry for that nostalgic detour. Back to Hamilton and his career, then. Hamilton's ventures extend beyond the racetrack and the recording studio. In 2018, he served as an executive producer for the documentary film The Game Changers. Interesting. I never realized he was involved in film production. Yes, and he was even offered a role as a fighter pilot in the film Top Gun Maverick by Tom Cruise himself. Unfortunately, he had to decline due to his Formula One commitments. Quite the Hollywood opportunity missed there. Indeed, but he's also involved in the gaming world. He served as the maestro of the Gran Turismo series since Gran Turismo Sport in 2017. And he had his Time Trial Challenge DLC pack released in the game in November 2019. I never really considered how his expertise could translate into creating gaming experiences. That's a good point to ponder. And Hamilton's a name in the fashion industry as well. In 2018, he launched the clothing line Tommy X. Lewis during New York Fashion Week with American fashion designer Tommy Hilfiger. From racetracks to runway fashion, quite the leap. Yes, and he didn't stop there. In September 2019, Hamilton launched a vegan restaurant named Neat Burger. It claims to be the first international plant-based burger chain. In fact, Neat Burger was crowned Best Vegan Restaurant of the Year at the Deliveroo Restaurant Awards in 2020. A champion on the track and in the kitchen. Impressive. That's not all. Hamilton's also an ambassador for the luxury watch company IWC. And last year, he toured the world via Portiel Hologram, making its U.S. debut in Los Angeles in September. Well, that's certainly a novel way of getting around. And lastly, let's not forget Hamilton's endeavor in the all-electric SUV off-road racing series Extreme E. He launched Team X44 in September 2020 to compete from the 2021 season on. The X44 team even finished second in the inaugural Extreme E Championship. A man of many talents and passions, Lewis Hamilton. Fascinating stuff. Team X44, Hamilton's venture in the all-electric SUV off-road racing series, won the 2022 championship in the final race of the season, which makes it yet another feather in Hamilton's cap. Not just on tarmac then, but dirt tracks as well. Indeed. In August 2022, Hamilton joined the newly established ownership group of the National Football League's Denver Broncos. So he's involved in American football, too. Yes, and in October 2022, Hamilton founded the production company Dawn Apollo Films. Its debut projects include a sports action drama film directed by Joseph Kosinski, and a documentary film about Hamilton, both co-produced by Hamilton and set to be released on Apple TV+. Quite the entrepreneur, our man Hamilton. Now, let's talk about his personal life. In 2017, Hamilton told the BBC that he had become vegan, citing environmental and cruelty reasons. His efforts in vegan activism earned him the title of PETA Person of the Year in 2018. A champion with a conscience. That's right. He's also a fan of art, mentioning Andy Warhol as one of his favorite artists. He was in a relationship with Nicole Scherzinger, the lead singer of the American girl group Pussycat Dolls, from November 2007 to February 2015. A life as vibrant off the track as on it. Hamilton is a Catholic, prays regularly, and is guided by his faith. He believes that he has the hand of God resting over him when racing in Formula One. A strong faith to match his strong drive. And in March 2022, Hamilton revealed that he is in the process of legally changing his name to include his mother's maiden name, Lara Balestier, as a middle name. What a lovely tribute to his mother. In June 2022, Hamilton added another title to his collection, Honorary Citizen of Brazil, a proposal made by politician André Figueiredo and passed in the Brazilian Chamber of Deputies. That's a unique accolade, I must say. Now, let's address some legal issues. In December 2007, 
Hamilton was suspended from driving in France for a month after being caught speeding at 196 kilometers per hour on a French motorway. Furthermore, two days before the 2010 Australian Grand Prix, his car was impounded after Victoria police witnessed him deliberately losing traction. He was eventually fined 388 Australian dollars. Seems like Hamilton's love for speed got the better of him off the track as well. In 2017, Hamilton's rights management company, 44IP, opposed Swatch Group's application to register a trademark for Hamilton International in Europe for the sale of watches and timepieces. However, in 2020, the European Union Intellectual Property Office rejected 44IP's arguments. Legal battles can be as challenging as those on the track, it seems. As for his residence, Hamilton moved to Luan, Vaud, Switzerland in 2007, citing privacy as his main reason for leaving the UK. He later admitted that taxation was also a factor in his decision. A practical decision considering the nature of his profession. In 2010, Hamilton moved to Monaco, purchasing a house worth a reported 10 million pounds. He also owns an apartment in Manhattan, New York, which he bought for $21 million in 2017, as well as an estate in Colorado, where he plans to live after his retirement. Quite the international lifestyle there. With all his achievements and ventures, it's no surprise that Hamilton's wealth and income are substantial. In 2015, he was ranked as the richest British sportsperson, with an estimated personal fortune of 88 million pounds. By 2020, his fortune had grown to an estimated 224 million pounds, making him the richest British sports star in the history of the Sunday Times Rich List. That's an impressive financial trajectory. Just before the 2015 Monaco Grand Prix weekend, Hamilton signed a contract to stay with Mercedes until the end of the 2018 season in a deal reportedly worth more than £100 million over the three years, making him one of the best-paid drivers in Formula One. That's certainly more than pocket change. And in the week leading up to the 2018 German Grand Prix, Hamilton signed a two-year contract with Mercedes reported to be worth up to £40 million per year, making him the best-paid driver in the history of Formula One. According to Forbes, Hamilton was one of the highest-paid athletes of the 2010s decade, and also the highest-paid Formula One driver from 2013 to 2021. Hamilton's success on the track has certainly translated into financial success off the track. It's quite remarkable. Thanks for tuning in to F1 Motor Fever Podcast today. We've had an incredible journey through the life and career of Lewis Hamilton, a true icon of Formula One. Your engagement means the world to us. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and share this episode with other Formula One enthusiasts. Your comments and interaction really help keep this channel alive. Absolutely. And remember, there's always something exciting in the pipeline, so do keep coming back for more. Oh, and Enzo, I know you're listening. You're going to love this episode, mate. To everyone else, a massive thank you. We look forward to the next episode. Couldn't have said it better myself. See you all again soon. George Watson and William. Pedal to the metal. Keep your gaze on the road. Our channel's content is pure gold.